Hi, I'm Nick Bohannon, Sports Performance Specialist for the International Training and Research Center, and I'm here with Eric Vermilia. And today we're going to go over the functional movement screen. The functional movement screen is a series of exercises in which you're graded in your quality of movement, and from there we can determine your strengths and limitations in terms of flexibility and strength that can limit your ability on, out on the lanes and also have your increased risk of injury. So we're going to go over these exercises so you can do them at home to do a self-evaluation that can help improve your performance. The first exercise that we're going to grade is the deep squat. This exercise is looking for inabilities to get into a full squat that can be due to a limitation in calf flexibility. We're also going to be looking at shoulder mobility issues as well. For this, we're going to have Eric get set up, feet shoulder width apart, and we're going to use this bar. He's going to rest it on his head to start out with, and we're going to line up his hands just so his elbows are at 90 degrees. He's going to lift it straight above his head, and now he's going to keep the bar above his head and squat down as far as he can while keeping his heels flat on the ground. As you can see, he has a little bit of issues with this, so he's going to step back onto the board with his heels, keeping his toes flat on the ground and squat down again. Now you can see that he's able to go down a lot easier, and so this is showing us that he has a limitation in calf flexibility. So if during a squat, even when standing on the board, the bar goes forward, this is a sign that there's some shoulder mobility issues. We want to make sure the bar is staying above the head during the entire squat. If you find that you are lacking calf flexibility, a great exercise to do is this kneeling stride. You get on one knee, use a pad for comfort, and this bar is a visual guide. While keeping your heel flat on the ground, have the bar slightly in front of your toes or right at the level of your toes, and then shift your weight forward so that your knee goes in front of the bar. And then simply rock back and forth 15 to 20 times, and on the last one, hold it for 20 seconds. To improve on shoulder mobility, we can do this exercise that Eric's gonna demonstrate. First off, he's gonna lay on his side, and he's going to have his arm straight out in front of him. We're going to move his top leg and make it so his knee is slightly above waist level. From here, he's going to put his hands together. Keeping his bottom hand on the ground, he's going to reach back behind him as far as he can. And then come back and just repeat this multiple times and then hold the stretch on the last time. The next exercise is the hurdle step over, and it's looking for flexibility issues in the hip. Bowlers oftentimes have hip problems that lead to low back injuries, and so we want to make sure that we're not limiting ourselves and putting ourselves at increased risk. To start off with, Eric's going to stand next to this, the apparatus, and we're going to make sure that the cord is right below his knee, which it already is, and then he's going to set up with his feet together, toes touching the bar, and he's going to put this bar behind his head, resting on his shoulders. Next, he's going to step over the cord, touch the floor with his heel, and step back, trying to keep everything moving in a straight line. We also want to make sure that the bar across his shoulders is staying as level as possible. Players that have issues with flexibility will typically struggle with stepping over the bar without knocking it over or having to move their legs out to the side in order to step over it. For improving hip flexibility, a great stretch is this glute stretch. Eric's going to lay down on the floor like he's getting ready to do a sit-up. He's going to keep his heels flat on the ground with his knees bent and bring his left leg up so his ankle is on his knee. He's going to reach through his legs and bring his legs towards his chest. He should feel this in his butt. So this stretch is going to be good for taking pressure off the low back and the hips, especially in the sciatic nerve region. So this is going to allow you to be to bowl more pain-free and have also more mobility. This exercise is a partner stretch for improving hip flexibility. Eric's going to start in the same position with like he's going to do a sit-up. Then he's going to place his right leg on his left knee and we're going to rotate everything over. Then I'm going to lightly pull his, his knee towards me. 
And he's going to feel this right here in his hip flexor. Bowlers oftentimes get tightness in the hip flexor just from the natural positions that we experience during bowling. The next exercise is testing for core strength and lower body strength. It's called the inline lunge. For this, Eric's going to stand with his right foot on the board, toes at zero, and the heel of his left foot is going to be on the board at 19 inches. This is going to be the same distance as the height of where the lower part of his knee is that we got from the hurdle step over test. From here, Eric's going to hold on to the bar with his right hand behind his neck and his left hand in his low back. The right hand is going to be up above when the left leg is in front, just like in an overhead throwing motion. He's going to keep three points of contact, the back of his head with the bar, the back of his shoulders, and his butt with the bar throughout the entire process of the lunge. From here, he's going to lunge down as far as he can and come back up, keeping those three contact points. Individuals that struggle with this exercise are going to struggle with maintaining balance and also keeping those three contact points during the entire lunge. If you find that you struggle with the inline lunge, a couple exercises you can do to help improve that area is to strengthen your legs through squats and lunges. Squats can be performed with having your feet a little bit wider than shoulder width apart, toes pointed forward or slightly out. Try to keep your weight balanced on your heels as you basically just pretend that you're sitting down. By keeping your weight back, it'll be, make it a lot easier to do the squatting motion. You can also do lunges, starting out with your feet a little bit closer together, step out in front, and lower your weight to the ground. Try not to allow your knee to pass too far out in front of your toes. This will help prevent any extra stress being placed on your knee. And then step back as much of a straight line as possible. Try and keep the motion nice and tight just to keep any extra stress from being placed on the body. The next exercise is looking for imbalances and flexibility of the shoulder. For this, we're going to first take a measurement of Eric's hand. He's sitting right at about seven and a half inches. This is going to be important for measuring the differences between the left and the right side. Eric's going to make two fists up in the air as he turns around for the camera to see. And he's going to try and get his fists as close together. Then we're going to measure the distance here. This is six inches. That is within the seven inches, so that's good. And then as he switches to the other side, we can see that it is much greater. The measurement here is 14 inches. With Eric being a right-handed bowler, it's common for the dominant arm to be a lot lower, as in the case with here. A good number for you to, as a reference point is going to be about one hand length. With Eric being seven and a half inches, that's where we want him to be. Obviously, that number was a lot greater, so we need to work on shoulder flexibility in his right arm or his right shoulder. So now we're going to show you a couple of exercises that you can use to help improve your shoulder flexibility. Using a piece of PVC pipe, Eric's going to use his left arm to actually pull his arm up towards his shoulder blade. This stretch is really going to focus on the muscles that get overdeveloped through the use of a 15 or 16 pound bowling ball and the repetitive shots that bowlers experience. So this is a great exercise to help get you a looser swing and improve your performance. For this stretch, Eric's going to lay on his side with his right arm extended out in front of him. He's going to bend his elbow up to 90 degrees. And with his opposite hand, he's going to apply some light pressure to push his palm towards the floor. This can be very painful at first. If you lean back away from your hand, you can actually re reduce the amount of pressure and you can actually go further towards the floor. Or if you roll forward towards your hand, it's going to make it feel a lot tighter and you're going to lose some range of motion. Make sure you're trying to stay close to your hand in order to get as much stretch and the most amount of benefit from this stretch.
This exercise is called a straight leg raise, and it's looking at hamstring flexibility. For this, Eric's lying on his back, and we have a board underneath his knees. He's going to place his feet together and toes pointed towards the ceiling. He's going to first keep his left leg on the ground and try to bring his right one up as high as he can, keeping both legs straight. For our grading purposes, we're looking to see how high up the ankle comes relative to the leg that's on the ground. If he does that one again with his right leg, we see that if we line it up with the pole, he's right about level with his knee or just above. If he lowers it and brings up his left leg, we can see that he can go up a lot higher and he's actually level with the mid part of his thigh or above. We really want to make sure that the leg is able to come up to the mid part of the thigh or higher in order to have good flexibility. As you can see, Eric's right leg is limited compared to his left leg, and this is going to be contributed to bowling. Due to his style, he's just not getting the same range of motion from right to left. So we need to work on some stretching to help balance this out. A simple exercise to help improve hamstring flexibility is to lie on your back and do a simple straight leg raise, just as we were testing. Just keep doing it 10 to 15 times, and then hold the last one for 15 to 20 seconds. Additional stretches for the hamstring include a leg swing. Eric's just going to stand with his feet slightly apart in order to maintain balance and then start swinging his right leg front to back. This is going to help work on the hamstrings and as well as the hip flexor in the front part of the thigh. This type of stretch is going to be called a dynamic stretch. We can also do a static stretch where Eric stands on both feet and then bends over and tries to touch the floor with his toes. This is going to be a static stretch because there's less movement involved. He's basically just going to bend over, try and go down as far as he can, and hold that position for 20 to 30 seconds. This exercise is the trunk stability push-up, and it's looking for upper body strength and core strength. In order to make it a little bit more difficult, in order to see differences in core strength, we're actually going to place Eric's hands in a slightly different position from a normal push-up. He's actually going to have his hands a little bit further in front of him and out to the side. Basically, his elbows are going to be making 90 degrees. From here, he's going to push up, and we're looking to see if his upper body and his hips come up off the ground at the same time. As we can see, that there was some slight difference in the two coming up, so we need to work on some core strength but we can see that he did the push-up, so his upper body is gonna be okay. To help improve on your core strength, you can do planks. Eric here is lying on the floor. He's gonna push himself up on his elbows. While he's pushing up, he's trying to focus on coming up with his hips and his upper body at the same time, just like in the push-up. And then he's gonna hold it for 20 to 30 seconds. The longer you can hold it, the better. The last exercise of the functional movement screen is the rotational stability test, and it's looking for core strength. For this, Eric is on his hands and knees straddling a board. His knees and feet are touching the sides of the board, and the tips of his thumbs are touching the sides of the board. He's going to take his right arm and his left leg, take them out, bring them back in, trying to touch elbow to knee, and back out. And then he's going to switch and do the other side. When you're doing this test, make sure you're bringing your elbow to your knee. If you feel like you can do this really easily, try doing the same side, the right arm and the right leg, and the left arm and the left leg. If you find that you struggle with these, we need to work on some core strength. A great exercise to improve core strength is called the dying bug. For this, Eric's going to lie on the ground and raise his arms and legs up into the air. From here, he's going to take his opposite arm and leg out and bring them back. So right now he's taking his right arm and left leg out, bringing them back up, and he's going to switch left arm and right leg. It's pretty much the same movement as the rotational stability test, except you're on your back instead of on your hands and knees. Through the use of the functional movement screen, you can determine what your strengths and limitations are in terms of flexibility and muscular strength. And from there, you can work on different areas to help improve the way your body moves that will help your overall fitness level as well as your bowling performance.